let's ask my next uh, guest, uh, Chief Executive of RVE, uh, Chief Strategy Officer, Mr. Bianbaum, what he makes of all of this. Leo, thank you so much for joining us on the set this morning. Now, it does mean that there is a whiff of optimism here in Davos. Um, what is your take on renewable energy? Copenhagen was short of a disaster, really. Well, there's nothing to add to that one. It's clearly a failure, and uh, it is a problem for us utilities because it doesn't provide us with the clarity in the boundary conditions which we would really need to, uh, to make the significant investments which are expected of us. So Copenhagen was bad. Uh, we hope that this can be changed soon, that we at least get a higher clarity where to go. Now, I also want to talk to you about your planned UK nuclear reactors. Have you decided who your supplier is going to be, whether it's Arriva or Westinghouse? Yeah, we have not decided yet. We're in the process of doing so. And uh, I think given the time that we are talking, we are talking about project development phases of several years, there's actually no hurry in making that uh, decision uh, that fast and so soon. Uh, we rather don't rush it, make a reasonable project development. So that you have the best possible decision. But there are reports that Westinghouse is actually a, a favorite. Is this true? No, I, I cannot comment on that one. It, the point is we have not decided, and that is absolutely the truth right now. We are open in our decision. Um, you talk to me about acquisitions. Are you earmarking anything at the moment? Because it does seem that actually valuations seem pretty cheap. Uh, a lot of companies are having trouble financing their acquisitions. You seem to be in a pretty good position. Yeah, we, we, you have to remember that in the turmoil of last year, we actually made a very significant acquisition uh, at Ascent in the Netherlands with more than $7 billion, uh, equity value. And uh, we are not planning uh, any further uh, significant acquisition, of, especially of that size. Also, the valuations have gotten cheaper, but not really cheap, because fundamentally, energy is still a business that has good perspectives. I know you haven't, you've, for example, decided not to bid for the Polish unit ENEA. Mm -hmm. um, how low would the share price there have to be, or how much off the market share would it have to take for you to even consider it? Well, last year, we actually were looking at ENEA. It would have been a bold step. Um, I, I think the point is the opportunity has gone and I don't see the window of opportunity opening up in 2010 again. So sincerely, I believe that this is a speculation which won't lead to a concrete transaction. All right. What about joint ventures with other companies across Europe? Is this something that you're also entertaining in terms of idea? Yeah, I think uh, what we have learned in the last year that counterparty risk uh, and cluster risks matter also for large utilities. So. Uh, we have to share the burden of these huge projects between different partners. Uh, let me take the examples of offshore wind parks. We are talking 1 billion, 2 billion euro investments for one park. And it actually makes a lot of economic sense to share that between different partners. So I think in the energy industry, we will see much more joint ventures on the generation side, also on the renewable side. We will see different types of partnerships. And I think in that sense, there will be a significant movement in the structure of the industry. Leo Birnbaum, thank you so much uh, for being with us.